what about the role of bacteria and, and particularly the gut microbiome and our immune system? A healthy gut microbiome will lead to a healthy immune system and an unhealthy gut microbiome makes us susceptible to all kinds of diseases such as diabetes, such as uh, multiple sclerosis, such as depression and anxiety disorders. Carrie, what do we know about what's going on in the gut and cancer? for example. Sure. So Gary talked a lot about inflammation and immunity, which are incredibly important for the development of cancer, both its development in terms of risk for preventing cancer, and also once you present either with the early stage or pre-cancer or even a more advanced cancer with its progression and also with survival from cancer post-treatment. Inflammation and immunity are very important for that, so I'm glad that he really touched on that. Uh, the other thing that the gut microbiome is causally involved in is obesity, which I know you mentioned, mm. thankfully, that is one of the primary causes of cancer. It's the leading cause of cancer in non-smokers. That's something that's very important. So to say that again, because I think that's... Yeah. Obesity... Is the leading cause of cancer in non-smokers. So first, don't smoke. Then manage your weight, and part of managing your weight is also, of course, consuming a healthy diet, which is also strongly related to the gut microbiome. And healthy people who are not taking, say, antibiotics or some other type of medication, the diet is the primary shaper of the gut microbiome. So if you think upstream, it's the diet. You think intermediate, it's obesity. Type 2 diabetes also increases risk of different cancers related to insulin resistance. And then downstream of that is cancer. And so I like to say, if we could just figure out the right diet, and more importantly, get people to be able to follow those diets. Um, I will also say that uh, on a maybe more lower level, we also are driven by our gut microbiomes to eat, eating behavior from the brain, sure. and, and possibly even what foods that we choose or what foods that we crave could be related to the microbiome. We're doing some really cutting edge new research on that.